So two gorgeous guys there, but Sherry, you spent the weekend with a gorgeous girl. Oh, yes. I have to say congratulations to Keely and Simon because we've had a little baby girl, yeah. Molly. Yeah. Yeah. There she is. Oh. And I had to check. I know. Oh, it's making me fill up. She was six pounds two ounces. Oh. And she's the tiniest creature I have ever seen, the most perfect creature in the world. And I have to say thank you to Wigan Maternity, which is the most wonderful hospital I've ever been Fantastic. into in my life. Oh. They treated us so well, but I have to just say, because yeah. of health and safety, they're not allowed a toaster. So if anybody has got a toaster, they would like one, but apparently they can't have a toaster. So or just if you're passing, toast. just bring some toast Yeah, bring in. some toast. Yeah. <laughs> they have to have a toast lady. Uh -huh. But I have to say that Ollie has been fantastic with Molly. Has he? Because he is four and he's been the star of the show. Sure. And he just strokes her and kisses and goes, that's my friend, my baby sister. Aww. And it's just wonderful. And of course, Lucy is other sister is be besides, and we're all beside ourselves, like, oh, as you can know. Yeah. I know! Yeah. Congratulations! Yeah. Okay, on with the show. And uh, after presenting the Golden Globes two nights ago, it seems Hollywood is still reeling from some of the comments Ricky Gervais made whilst presenting the awards ceremony. Some critics are saying he hit the wrong mark with jokes like, it's going to be a night of partying and heavy drinking, or as Charlie Sheen calls it, breakfast. <laughs> now, we're all used to Ricky's sense of humour, and uh, he's well-loved over in the UK, but did he overstep the mark in Hollywood? It sounds well, like one of your nights out, never mind well, Charlie Sheen. That, that, could, that could have been applied to me, that couldn't it, really? Um, I think that was very funny. I love Ricky Gervais. I th you know, he, ca he can't do any wrong for me. And to me, he did do that the year before. Yeah. So Hollywood and the award Knows, panel yeah. knew what they were letting... You know, I'm mm. quite surprised that they have gone for someone as sort of contentious as Ricky Gervais. Yeah. Mm. Because Americans, a lot of Americans do have a different sense of, sense of humour to us. But I think that... <clears throat> if somebody's horrible about me, which is quite often, <laughs> if they do it with a sense of humour, even if it's quite malicious... I remember once years ago when I was doing a series called Soldier, Soldier, and my character suddenly, from just making tuna sandwiches in the kitchen in every episode, suddenly became a club singer. And, um, <laughs> and club Colette, sandwich singer. a club sandwich singer. <laughs> and, um, and Colette, played by Angie Clark, great actress, had to, had to hear Marsha singing in a club once and go, Oh, my God, Marsha, that was brilliant. And Jackie Stephen wrote, Colette, who was clearly on her way to the ear, nose and throat hospital. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I think that's quite funny. It's when some <laughs> TV reviewers or, or whatever mm. are just very nasty about people's physicality, which they can't help, yeah, and no, it's just done without any sense of humour. It's cruel, yeah. because those people have feelings and they can't do anything about the way that they look, but and it's just very, very cruel. With comics, it is their job. I mean, he had a job to do, didn't he, that night? And it was to be... I mean, they know what he's like. He is irreverent, and, and, <clears> and that's, that's part of his humour. I do, I mean, and I do think it's funny, as long as he's creative and clever with it. I thought he was a bit strong with Robert Downey Jr., though, when he said, um, what was it, it, it you, Robert Downey Jr., you may have seen him in... Um, the Betty Ford Clinic. Betty Ford Clinic in, the in the LA County Jail, jail which was a... You know, and I suppose if you've got, like, <laughs> <laughs> With Denise... Um, <laughs> then I suppose if you're trying to beat those sort of demons, then that's quite tricky. But it's when journalists attack someone just for the sake of it without yeah. any wit, I can't stand it. But equally, he shouldn't have gone on there and done four hours of telling everyone how marvellous they are either, because that would have been wrong oh, too. Oh, exactly. Yeah. But, th I mean, that is what makes him so refreshing. And I think we're more used to it over here. I mean, you go to any awards do, really, as a, as a loose woman, and you just sit and wait for it. You know you're going to have yeah. the, you know, the mm. mickey taken out of you. But at the same time, it, as you say, if it's all right if it's about your programme or if you're an actress, your personality or what have you. But when it's something deeply personal, awesome. I've, I've been to an awards do before and was introduced in a really not very nice way, just as my marriage had ended and the papers had printed some really horrible things about me. And uh, you're standing there and you're sort of backstage and then everyone's clapping and you come mm. on. What, what can you do? It's also yeah. attacking people who don't have a voice. I mean, if you've got somebody who's, say, hosting an awards ceremony and they're going to bring somebody on who can clearly fight back. But I remember watching mm. some award show years ago and it was a presenter who I really like and admire very much. But on this occasion, he brought some people on to introduce an award. I think it was Steps, the band Steps. And it was clearly that they'd been brought on purely to be 
The, it was so, it, oh, it was so awful, yeah. and they're not comedians, some and they didn't do, have a some voice. Some people do get picked on, don't they? For some absolutely no reason. I mean, Jeremy Beadle used to get picked on yeah. for uh, the most wonderful, the loveliest man, man in the world. Mm. But he, he got to a point where people picked on him. But the Americans don't get irony, and I think that's what Ricky Gervais is about. Mm. And they don't understand it. They're also very, very sensitive. You know, what did they mean? What did they mean? And they they pick up on every yeah, single yeah. moment. Mm. But I, I just, I mean, if you go we to those awards, we'd never go though, out, if would you, we? If you <laughs> well, I mean, look at us when we did Girls Aloud. We were called everything. But I mean, Nana's Aloud was about the best we got. <laughs> <laughs> but that was for a good cause. And if you're going to turn up to an awards show as a performer, then you kind yeah. of, it comes with the territory, doesn't it, really? Oh, and like well, I say, we're, we're quite used to, um, in the papers, well, being called yes, all sorts fact, of things. In fact, in saying that, I've got a little thing here for Denise. Ali Ross wrote... Hell's Corsets May West Lives. A uniform <laughs> last this worn is not my costume on Sunday. By Agnes Baden Powell at the Girl Guides 1928 Jamboree. <laughs> and a hairdo we haven't seen since the opening ceremony of the Berlin Olympics in 1936. <laughs> it's Denise. <laughs> And she's either dancing on ice or angling for the next regional tour of Hello, Hello. <laughs> In today's papers. it was in it was in today's but paper. they did go on to say though that you were the highlight yeah. of <laughs> well in, in, and thank you in, in in ali's eyes but you see generally i just he makes me wet myself laughing ali no, was you know what i mean so fun. i'm quite flattered to be talked about about, about by him <laughs> what are you wearing oh next God. week <laughs> oh you'll have to wait and see but also somebody who works in this building said that they were watching it and their partner went is june whitfield under <laughs> <laughs> what we've got to say. God help us. Uh, but if you've got anything to add, don't be a silent witness. Get loud.